All right, strap in, everyone. We're going deep on this one. We're talking Boeing, Starliner, and a trip to the ISS that, uh, well, let's just say it lasted a bit longer than expected. Yeah, this one's got it all, really. Mm. You've got technical snafus, a media frenzy, and even some uh, interesting opinions from certain former presidents. We're talking NASA press releases, a deep dive from CBS News, and even some updates straight from Boeing. Should be interesting to see how those perspectives line up. What I find interesting is how this whole thing really throws a wrench into the whole space tourism is just around the corner mm. narrative. Like, it's a stark reminder that space is still incredibly challenging and unforgiving. Yeah, absolutely. No room for error out there. So let's rewind back to June 5, 2024, Starliner's big launch day. Big day for Boeing. I mean, this was supposed to be the test flight, the one to prove they were ready for regular crew rotations to the ISS. High stakes for sure. Oh yeah, huge stakes. After all the delays and setbacks they had, this is their chance to show they could deliver. And on board, you had Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, two seasoned astronauts, all set for what should have been a pretty routine 10-day mission. Right. A quick trip up, a bit of science, and back home. But uh, space, as we know, doesn't always play by the rules. Nope. Definitely not. So what happened? Take us through it. So picture this. They're approaching the ISS. Everything seems to be going smoothly. And then, bam, alarms start blaring. Helium leaks, thruster issues, the whole nine yards. Oh, wow. That's got to be a heart-stopping moment. It was serious stuff. We're not talking about minor glitches here. This was a situation where NASA had to make a tough call, you know, prioritize astronaut safety over the original mission objectives. I can only imagine the conversations happening in mission control. Yeah, high-pressure stuff. So in the end, Wilmore and Williams managed to dock with the ISS, join the crew there. But the Starliner, well, the Starliner had to head back home uncrewed in September 2024. So their 10-day trip turns into, what, a 10-month stay? Pretty much. Just a slight change of plans. Mm -hmm. And that's when that whole stranded-in-space narrative started to take off, right? Oh, yeah. You had some media outlets, even former President Trump, jumping on that bandwagon. But if I remember correctly, the astronauts themselves pushed back on that pretty hard. They did. From what I've read, they felt prepared committed to the mission, and never actually stranded. I mean, these are highly trained professionals, right? Not just some folks on a joyride. Exactly. These astronauts, they integrated seamlessly with the Expedition 7172 crew, kept the station running, carried out their experiments, the whole deal. They just rolled with it. It's remarkable, really, that level of adaptability, that mental toughness. It speaks volumes about their training and professionalism. Oh, absolutely. Going from a quick 10-day jaunt to almost a year in space, that's got to mess with your head. Just try to imagine how you would cope with a schedule change like that. It's wild. Yeah, and especially in an environment as isolated and demanding as the ISS. So while Wilmore and Williams are up there adapting to their new uh, extended reality, what's happening back on Earth? Well, back on Earth, you've got a whole team trying to figure out what exactly went wrong with the Starliner. A lot riding on this mission, remember. And NASA, they needed answers. Okay, so picture this. We've got our astronauts dealing with an unexpected extended vacay, and back on Earth, everyone's scrambling, trying to piece together what exactly happened with the Starliner. What were the investigators zeroing in on? Well, the big things were those helium leaks and those thruster issues, mm -hmm. right? Those are the red flags. And to understand what went wrong, you kind of got to picture the Starliner's propulsion system. It's this whole network of valves and pipes that control the flow of helium, and that helium is what pressurizes the fuel and oxidizer tanks. So the helium, that's what gives the thrusters the oomph to, you know, move the Starliner around. Exactly. Think of it this way. Imagine you've got a bike tire, right? But it's got a slow leak. You can still ride the bike, but you're going to lose power, lose control. And that's kind of what was happening with those helium leaks on the Starliner. The pressure was dropping, which meant less force to, you know, actually propel the spacecraft. Okay, that makes sense. But weren't there also some problems with the thrusters themselves? Right, yeah, there were some definite issues with the reaction control thrusters. And those are like the smaller thrusters, the ones that let you do those fine-tuned maneuvers, like rotating the spacecraft, adjusting its position for docking, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it turned out several of these thrusters just weren't delivering the thrust they were supposed to, which is a big problem when you're trying to, you know, dock with a space station moving at thousands of miles per hour. Yeah, no kidding. So you've got leaks messing with the pressure and thrusters not firing right talk about a stressful situation for everyone involved yeah no doubt i mean it just highlights 
how incredibly precise everything has to be with spaceflight, right? Right. Every single component needs to work perfectly. And even tiny little anomalies can snowball into huge problems. So did they ever pin down a root cause? Like, what was the culprit behind all this? Well, it wasn't a simple answer, that's for sure. NASA and Boeing, they launched this massive investigation. I mean, they were pouring over telemetry data, running ground tests. They even had astronauts simulating the mission in those big simulators. They were determined to get to the bottom of it. Absolutely. And they did uncover some interesting things. One problem they found was with this tiny Teflon seal. It was inside those reaction control thrusters. And it seems like the heat, like during the pre-launch prep, might have warped the seal, which then screwed up how the thrusters work. Hold on. A tiny seal almost derailed this whole mission. It's crazy, right? It just goes to show how complex and interconnected all these systems are. It's not always some big, obvious thing that causes a problem. And with those helium leaks, well, it turns out they trace those back to a few things, like how some valves were configured and maybe even some contamination. So it was like this perfect storm of little issues that created this big, hairy problem. So what does that mean for the future of Starliner? I mean, can they bounce back from this? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? I mean, it's definitely a big hit to... Boeing to their space ambitions, you know, their reputation takes a hit. People are questioning whether they can deliver on their promises to NASA. And then there's the financial side of things. Delays, investigations, those aren't cheap. Yeah, this whole situation's probably cost a fortune. Oh, absolutely. We're yeah. probably talking hundreds of millions, maybe even billions of dollars. But the bigger question is, can they actually fix it? What do you think? Is there a path forward for the Starliner program? Well, NASA is looking at all the data from the investigation, trying to decide if the Starliner is safe enough to actually carry astronauts to and from the ISS. Mm. I mean, put yourself in their shoes. Would you want to climb aboard a spacecraft that had these kinds of problems? Probably not, to be honest. No. So what are the key things they're weighing as they make this decision? Safety is number one, obviously. They need to be 100% certain those technical issues are resolved. But then there's cost, there's schedule, you know. Yeah. Every delay, every cost overrun, it chips away at people's confidence. And then there's the competition to consider. You mean SpaceX. Right, exactly. SpaceX and their Crew Dragon. They've been reliable, they've been affordable, and that puts pressure on Boeing to really step up their game. NASA has options now. They're not going to just sit back and tolerate setback after setback. Sounds like it's make or break time for Boeing and the Starliner. It is. They've got to show they learned from this whole mess and that they can earn back NASA's trust. But this whole situation, it raises some big questions for space exploration as a whole, you know? Yeah. Like, how much risk is acceptable when we're talking about human lives? Where's that line between pushing the boundaries and keeping people safe? And how do these commercial companies fit into all of this? Yeah, those are some big questions. Feels like we're at this crossroads in how we approach space travel. We are, and that's something we'll be digging into even deeper in part three. Okay, so we've talked about the technical stuff, the money side of things, and the big question mark hanging over Boeing's whole space program. But let's, you know, zoom out a bit, look at the bigger picture. What does this whole Starliner situation mean for, like, the future of space exploration in general. It really does feel like a turning point, doesn't it? You've got these commercial players like SpaceX and Boeing really stepping up, taking on bigger roles. Yeah, it's a whole different ball game from the days when it was just, you know, government-run space programs. But then this Starliner thing happens, and you have to wonder, how do you, how do we manage the risks? How do you make sure everyone's accountable when you've got these these public-private partnerships involved in space. Right, that's the key question. Because on the one hand, bringing in commercial companies, it brings innovation, you get more efficiency, you get some healthy competition. Yeah, no doubt. It's shaken things up, driven progress. I mean, look at what SpaceX has done with reusable rockets, right? Uh, it's a game changer. Huge game changer. <laughs> but the Starliner situation, it's like a cautionary tale, you know? Yeah. Because when something goes wrong in space, it's not just about money. It's about people's lives. It's about national reputations. The stakes are, I mean, they're astronomical. So uh, so how do we find that balance? How do we harness the good stuff, the innovation that comes with commercial spaceflight, but also make sure that these missions are safe, that they're well run? I think it comes down to having a really strong framework in place. You know, regulations, oversight, checks and balances, all that. 
NASA can't just wash their hands of responsibility when it comes to human spaceflight. Right, right. They've got to set those standards, those high standards, and make sure that their partners, those commercial partners, are meeting their standards every step of the way. No cutting corners when you're talking about space travel. Absolutely not. And transparency is crucial. The public, they deserve to know what the risks are, what's being done to mitigate those risks. And this whole Starliner incident, it also really drives home how important it is to have you know, international collaboration in space. I mean, the ISS, it's like a testament to what we can achieve when different countries work together, pool their resources, their expertise. It really is. But it's not always smooth sailing, is it? Yeah. you got to navigate all those complex uh, geopolitical realities. You've got to make sure that everyone involved, all the partners, that they're all committed to, to safety, to ethical conduct. Oh, yeah. Just imagine trying to get all those astronauts from different countries back home when there's a like an unexpected delay, like with the Starliner. Talk about a diplomatic headache. Right. It just underscores how important it is to have those clear protocols, those lines of communication, so that when something happens, when there's an emergency, you've got that coordinated response ready to go. It's like a reminder that space exploration, it's not just about the technology, it's about the people. And speaking of the people, I think we have to give a shout out to Butch Wilmore and SUNY Williams. I mean, their resilience, their professionalism throughout that, that whole extended stay, it was pretty remarkable. Yeah. Grace under pressure. Right. They adapted to this crazy situation, stayed focused on the mission, kept doing all of that important research up on the ISS. True professionals. They embody the spirit of exploration for sure. It just goes to show that even when we hit those bumps in the road, those uncertainties that drive to explore, to push those boundaries, it's, well, it's part of who we are as humans. And as we wrap up this deep dive, I can't help but wonder what's next. What does the future hold for human space exploration? Will we go back to the moon? Will we see a true mission to Mars? Or will it be something even more ambitious, something even farther out beyond our solar system? Exciting and kind of scary all at the same time, isn't it? It is. But one thing's certain, the lessons we learn from the Starliner situation, they're going to shape how we make decisions, what paths we take as we continue to you know, reach for the stars. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today. From the nitty gritty details of spacecraft design to the complexities of international cooperation, the future of humanity in space. Hopefully you, the listener, have come away from this with a better understanding of just how challenging and intricate space exploration really is. And maybe, just maybe, a new appreciation for the courage and the ingenuity of those who dare to, to venture beyond our world. And who knows what other incredible stories are waiting for us out there in the vastness of space. But one thing's for sure, we'll be here to break them down for you, one fascinating detail at a time. So until next time, keep looking up and keep exploring. This is The Deep Dive, signing off.